We are looking back at the incredible year that Garmin has had with the Zero Bow Sight by sitting down with Wade, Clark Winlet, and Michael Wurzik as they reflect on their first impressions, their likes and dislikes, and why it has become such a revolutionary part of bow hunting. You know, you hear all the time, especially in the fishing world, you and I deal with it, innovation, game changers, greatest thing ever, but in the hunting world, you don't hear that term used as much. And, you know, when I look back about, I don't know, it's been almost four years ago I was at SHOT Show, a guy from Garmin came by with some ideas and some concepts, and then another guy started mentioning, and then the engineers, and the next thing you know, we had the Zero in our hands out here for the first time. I mean, I was kind of blown away looking at it, but it was a little intimidating. Yeah, you know, the cool thing about it is, is that it, when you get it dialed in, now it takes some dialing in, you got to get it right, it, it forces you to shoot a lot because you want to get that reticle, the reticle is what looks out there and actually puts the pin where you want it to be, so it's actually your rangefinder. And actually Michael is, is the one that's taught me the most about it, he, he figured that whole deal out really fast. And it's not that difficult, but you got to understand it. I mean, whenever we got it in that first day, <laughs> I sat down and I like, I read the directions at least four times. I mean, word for word going through it. And it still didn't click. Yeah. But finally, whenever you get it to click and you know we're not like slinging arrows down there four feet off the target, you finally get an understanding of it. I mean, it's like, this is really cool. It's like, well, I mean, then there was nothing for us to go off of. We had never, nobody had ever seen this type of a device before. And we're lucky we even got it here. I mean, the true backstory on that is we're out here on a hunting camp and the FedEx lady, it was raining. She didn't want to drive down the muddy road and she wires it to a fence and then you go find it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't really even on this ranch. <laughs> it was about five miles down the road and I got lucky and a guy that had it on his gate come down the road and I got it. And I mean, that was just, that was kind of a crazy day. Uh, we finally got it mounted on the bow. And well, you know, when we when we finally got it, once again, we had nothing to go with. You know, you go buy a site, normal site. We've all bow hunted for a long time. I mean, collectively, there's 60, 70 years of experience here bow hunting. We know how to set up a site. Well, this here, you know, there's a few directions and a phone number to call the engineer who designed it. And I still remember the first shot. And I mean, I missed the target by like, I don't know, 40 yards. And before we were done, I shot eight times. And Michael was like, well, I don't ever have to buy arrows again because they're all over the place out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, they're still down there too. <laughs> because, it, you know, our perception of this site was you squeeze the, the trigger on there and a red dot comes up. Well. I didn't know that that red dot was the range deal, and then you let off, and then your pin comes up. Never seen one before, and Clark's back here laughing at me. Yeah, and you you got the first one, and you made it work with that first hunt. Killed a it was a 12 point. I mean, it, it was a beautiful deer. Um, you know what I remember about that whole thing is is that the the thing about it is is that that was a prototype. We they it wasn't like they were coming out and fine tuned yet. So we were getting the first ones. Yep and you two figured it out, got that thing dialed in, and then killed a great deer. So that was pretty cool. I think we shot like 80 times that night. Yeah, I mean, we shot a bunch, and then, you know, I think we had to do an update or something for the engineer, yeah. and it was on, and we were good to go. Well, the coolest thing about the update, I, I, you know, the guy's like, hey, I just sent you an email to update your site, and I'm thinking, huh? <laughs> you know, and so all of these changes they've done to the site, they literally can put it on the Garmin website and you plug your site in. So if there's any bugs, any changes, any cool additions, it, it just, it's, it's like updating your phone. Yeah, it's, it's like your phone or, you know, like for me and you, when we're doing it on our boat, on our boats with our yeah. electronics, we, we, you know, they change pan optics or they change some kind of feature in there. We change them all the time. So you got to get used to that part of it, but it does give you those little added extras. Garmin's a leader in technology. I mean, when you look at everything from driving to navigation to our sites and other, many other devices, they've got devices that they're always tweaking and making better. And that's the thing about the site. Every time there's been something in this field testing period, we're one year into the Garmin Zero being in our hands, literally from the time we were here last year. And when we find new things and provide feedback, they give them to us. But yeah, that that first hunt, you know, 80 arrows, because like I said, the first eight, we, you know, didn't even have a clue. And then once we had the aha moment, it was like, you let that off and then there's the pin. And it was, it was magic after that. Yeah, and I, I mean, I've started grouping really well, but it took a little bit of time because there is an extra step in there. When you draw back, you're gonna squeeze the trigger, you're gonna see how far it is, then it's gonna put your pin. It's seamless to me now. I'm not, it doesn't take any extra. I, I can do it every single time. 
Um, I think the rangefinder is extremely accurate. It's the same every single time. I always look up there at what my range is saying and make sure. I've checked it numerous times. Yeah. I know it's good. And so all that part is good. Now, one thing that we, you know, Michael and you and I have talked about quite a bit is, is you got to adjust the brightness of that, of that pin that's in there. And it's real easy. There's just a toggle. You can go, you know, lower or higher, but however bright it is outside, you got to have that bright for your reticle and for your pin. Yeah. And I mean, once you kind of get used to it, you shot in a bunch of different kind of settings and you know your light settings I mean you don't even have to look at it really you just yeah. hit that button about four or five times yep. get it where you want to draw back and you're good to go yeah you've learned everything through there and the, and the process mechanically to me is very similar to a traditional sight wouldn't you agree yeah I mean it's the only thing that's different about it is it's adding about five to seven seconds when you pull the bow back to range and target yeah. that's the only thing you got to get used to and I mean once you've got that you're golden you're golden and you know, from, from the setup process, now that we're a year into this, you know, I look at ATA, it was the most incredible buzz I've ever seen of a product release out there. People were running to the Garmin booth, there were things going on all over, riders were wanting to know more, there was riders conferences that actually you and I were a part of down on that at our camp, and you know, and there's all of this buzz about it, but it's still hard for people to set up because it is so different out there. And you've learned a lot of tips, and you've actually taught me and Clark a lot of tips in there, but the process when you get that side out of the out of the box and you start putting it on is just different. It, it totally is. I mean, once again, you just go back to reading those directions, and it just takes a little bit to click. But yep. once it does, I mean, it's relatively simple once you get the whole idea and the concept down. It's just getting that down. I mean, you're pretty... A guy known for this is your you you want to stay between the lines. You have your patterns. You like what you like, and you know. But in the last month and a half, you've really gravitated towards this side. Talk about your experience. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm old school. You know, I mean, you just mentioned it. I, I like the things that I've done and for done it for a long time. I do it in fishing and I do it in hunting too. The great thing about this site is is that when you draw back, the way the reticle is, there's a there's a you know a red dot that's right in the middle of a green circle and. When I put, you know, I got all my anchor points, I anchor all the way back, I've got my nose touching my string, and when I get all that together, I've learned that it's made me a better shooter because what happens is, is if that dot's not right in there, well, then I'm torquing the bow or I'm doing something a little bit funny. But when you do it over and over again and you know that, that you come back and you just see that dot right there, well, it gives you confidence because you know everything's right before you let that arrow go. You're dialed in. I've, I've laughed at a lot of the comments that I look at on YouTube or I've gotten on Facebook or questions at different trade shows. Oh, this makes hunting obsolete. You're just it's not even bow hunting anymore. I shoot more with this sight than I've ever shot before because I've learned that it's telling me, like you said, when I'm doing things wrong. You know, when that dot in that circle is, is not communicating together, my form is off and I want my form to be perfect in those situations. And it even gives you feedback within the site, you know, that you were torqued one or two, three, four degrees off to the side. I mean, it's just a very intuitive uh, piece of equipment. Yeah, I mean, I think your comment to me quite a few times when you were really getting dialed in for your early season hunts this year was, is this site is way smarter than I ever thought about. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, it knows everything I'm doing, and but it gives you that feedback. And to me, once you start doing it and getting it right, then that just gives you confidence. Well, we, we both know from fishing and golf or anything we do, the more confidence you have, the better you're gonna be. What are a couple things, because you've done a lot of mechanical adjustments on sites. You've moved them left, right, up, down. I mean, what are the biggest things that you're seeing straight out of the box that a person outside of making sure that everything is lined up on the circle and the dot to get it to the first basic step? I mean, you get it out of the box, and I mean, your first step really is, I mean, you kind of want to, what I do is I look at my old site and kind of get an idea of where the angles on everything was. Right. And then I'll shoot it at 20 yards, and then once you get it on at 20 yards, I mean, that's all mechanical. I mean, that's just like sighting in any other boat. Right. That's just mechanical. After that, it's all electronic, and then the only part you have after that is just getting that reticle lined up. Yeah. 
And the only tip on that is, I mean, the, the adjustments on that are just so minute. Yes. It, it's yeah. like half a hash when you're looking. That's where having a buddy to help you kind of plays a big role. That's what one thing we've actually kind of learned on here because you're shooting a lot and the person shooting wants to keep shooting in there. And if you've got a buddy like what we've used Michael for a lot of times to help set up bows to make just a minor adjustment. And when we talk about that minor adjustment, it's following those arrows mm -hmm. to get that red dot in there. And that's once again where the brightness plays a big role. You know, if you're having trouble seeing those arrows or that circle, adjust that brightness in there. And like you said, it's just the toggling left or right of a couple of switches. It's real, it's real, real easy. And when I look at that site and where it's gonna help me, now that I've, I've shot it so many times, I'm getting a lot of repetition, I feel like if I was going on any kind of hunt where the animal had a chance to move from, you know, like when I see him, he's walking, angling towards mm -hmm. me. And like, you think you know your ranges, but all of a sudden he's 25 and then he's 15. I mean, I, I'm that quick to shoot him. Or if I was gonna go on a pronghorn or a mule deer hunt where I, I'm stalking and moving up on an animal and I have no idea how far he is, I kind of move out from behind a bush, I, I can range him as I shoot. Everything's really seamless. I mean, I think it's going to be the greatest game changer for those kind of hunts that you could possibly have. There's no gap shooting. There's no guessing. And, you know, that's where you hear people, well, I thought he was 35. So I just held between my 40 and my 30. Man, that's hard. I'm not concentrating when I do that. I'm just kind of, I look like I'm there and you fling the arrow. But this way here, you know you've got supreme confidence of what you've, what you've set up and, and where you're dialed in. And, and, and you still have to hunt. This is, you know, this is your combination of a rangefinder and a sight. It doesn't draw the bow for you. It doesn't pick the deer stand for you. It doesn't hold steady. It can't control buck fever or any other type of fever you're gonna get while you're out there hunting. You have to practice with this. You gotta set it up and you gotta hunt. Yeah, I just think it's one of those things that has the ability to do a lot for you in those situations. You know, where we hunt in Texas, you and I, a lot of times our shots are just gonna be, we might have a 15 yard, we're a lot in tight places, 15 to 25 yards, is that, that's just our shot. Well, th the sight works really great there too. Yep. But the ones that I've always thought, man, what do I do in this situation? It's when a deer's angling by, he's chasing a yep. doe. Yep. I mean, I see him coming, I range, I don't even know how far he's gonna be. So I, I draw, I actually get on him, I range him and pull the trigger that fast. And that's the ones that it's really gonna make such a huge difference on. And if you think about hunting situations, you run into those situations all the time. Yeah, you do. And I mean, the other cool thing that, I mean, you don't even really think about is this site, it's got fixed pins options too. Yes. I mean, you can range that deer, or you know, if you have like a piece of grass that sometimes will affect the range, well, you just hit your fixed pin and you can drop down your 15, 25, and 35 yard pins. Yeah, you're ready to shoot. Yeah, great point. I mean, you can adjust all that at a time. Other thing about it is that there's some ethics built into this site that I like. You know, a guy can't just go guess and starts flinging arrows at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 yards out there. You have to actually calibrate this sight to be able to do those things. You, you have to go and shoot them and get the shots in there. It'd ask you, did you hit the target? Yes or no? Were you high? Were you low? You tell it how many inches, so it makes you do that every time that you go out. And, and, and it'll only give you one yard past the most recent or last pin that you've calibrated. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great thing. Yes. It, it just keeps you from trying to sling an arrow out there at 55 yeah. when you only shot at 45. Yeah, you're not, you know, so it, once again, it's making you practice. It's making you spend the time out there. You can save multiple profiles for target shooters, people that are, you know, shooting big, heavier arrows versus lighter ones at different times. And the other cool thing is it actually, you know, so you, if you think about it when, you, when you're ranging and you let it off and it gives you the red dot or, or whatever color your pin's gonna be, and it'll be in, inside that circle. Well, if it's too close or a very short distance, you think, well, it's gonna be at the top. Well, this actually adjusts and puts it in the middle. So it calibrates for you on those very high angle, very difficult shots. So, I mean, there's just a lot of engineering math that's out of my level that made me call it a game changer and the most innovative product, basically, that I've ever seen in the hunting world. Thanks for watching. To learn more about the revolutionary Garmin Zero bow sight, head on over to Garmin.com. That will do it for us here on Cabela's Deer Gear TV. We'll see you next time.